Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Saturday, and it's time for our little afternoon conversation. And um, hi, I'm super excited because we have a really huge star joining us. Um, I hope he can figure out how to do this. And uh, basically, he's he started out before this whole crazy period uh, with 80,000 followers on Instagram. And now, how many followers does he have, you guys? He has well over a million. Let me see. 4.3. 4.3 million, to be exact. And uh, my daughter's cat is meowing in the background. Hi, everybody. Anyway, he's going to join us for an Instagram Live. He is a hoot. He comes from Chattanooga, Tennessee. You guys might recognize him. He used to be in Will and Grace. He had a big role in Will and Grace. Well, and uh, he's become such a huge star on Instagram. It's snowing here, by the way. How crazy is that? I'm in on Long Island, and it's Long Island, and it's now snowing. Anyway, hopefully, he'll figure out how to do this. But um, do you guys know who I'm talking about? Do you guys want to guess? Anybody want to guess who's coming to join me? He is, uh, let's see, I'll give you some hints. He is 4 feet 11. As I mentioned, he's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He is super funny. He has become the king of quarantine. And uh, anybody guess? Yeah, yeah, you guys, that's right, Leslie Jordan. So fingers crossed, you guys, that he can figure out how to join me for this Instagram Live because he's become quite the Instagram poster. He was put in jail once and he um, shared his cell or gave his, his cell to Robert Downey Jr. It was fun doing research for this one. What does that mean? I learned all kinds of things. What do you mean? The, the the jail. I'm going to get him to explain. Okay. Carrie, my daughter, wanted to understand that. Um, anyway, uh, he says he's responsible for Robert Downey Jr.'s success because of their time in the slammer together. So hopefully he'll be able to explain that. What else can I tell you? He has twin sisters and his mom. And uh, he lives in L.A., but he goes back and forth between uh, Tennessee, between Chattanooga and L.A. Because, as I mentioned, his mom lives there. He uh, has twin sisters. He did a one-man show called My Trip Down the Pink Carpet. I'm giving you his bio while we're trying to figure out if he can get on this thing. Um, and it, there's something about his Instagram posts, which are kind of both comforting and hilarious. And my friend Dana, who is uh, is my friend slash hairdresser, said, why don't you do an Instagram Live with Leslie? So I said, okay. So I DM'd him, and he was so sweet. And he said, sure, I'd be happy to. And he was very, very funny. And uh, now we're going to see it. And he asked us to reach out to his manager, right? So he would be sure to know how to do this. So maybe we should DM him and make sure he... Oh, we did? Mm -hmm. Okay. So hopefully, you guys, he'll be able to um, to join us. Meanwhile, oh, he loves to tell the story about... Are you guys talking about the prison story with, with Robert Downey Jr.? Well, apparently, he's he's got quite uh, a life history and... What did he say he was going to change the song about? Oh, When You Swish Upon a Star. He said he was going to change the Disney song to that. Um, gosh, my eyes are getting so bad. I can't really read without my glasses. So let me see. Here. Is this him here? No? Yeah. Yes. Wait, wait. You just didn't scroll it down. Oh, there he is. Check it. He just joined, guys. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. There I am. Yay! Hey! <laughs> ah, I'm so sorry. I don't worry. I connection in my house. I had to run into the other room. Don't Let's go worry. sideways. How okay. are you, Leslie? Is that better to do sideways? No, no. Go back the other way. You were good at first. That's perfect. <laughs> How you doing? 
Well, you know, I'm the most popular person on the internet. You are. <laughs> you are my friend. years of age. How, How did, on now, earth did this happen? It is so funny because I was just saying to everybody who was watching that you had 80,000 followers, Leslie, when this thing started. And now you have 4.3 million. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> well, they love you. And what do you, I mean, you must be thinking about this. What do you think it is about the way you're communicating with folks these days? I, I've thought so much about it. I think it's because, first of all, I'm funny. I know that. You know, you I've are. known that. I knew, I learned that, you know, in, in, uh, 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 to, to keep the bullies at bay. You know, yeah. I was a kid. <laughs> that was the best way. When they're hollering, smear the queer and try to hit me with the dodgeball. <laughs> but uh, I made that up. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good. Well, I bet, I bet growing up in Chattanooga, you did, I guess a lot of people probably did give you a bit of a hard time. You know, it's funny because I have said on many occasions that it did happen, but you know, it was, I was always, and you had, you had this, there's always that guy in school who you know is just gay as Christmas and all the girls love him. You know, I was so popular and the guys kind of had to put up with me, you know, because I had all the girls, you know, eating out of my hands. But, you know, as far as anything really happening, I was, you know, I was such a fun kid. And I was a good kid. And I came from a good family. Well, so, say, uh, you, tell a, you told a funny story, Leslie, about uh, I think your dad taking you to your first football game. And you, he said, here's the offense, here's the defense. And you said, when do the majorettes come out? <laughs> because my mother was a majorette in high school. And I was obsessed with that. And there were pictures of her, you know, with her baton and I would get it out and play with it and twirl it. You don't know when you're a kid, you know, I think my mother sort of knew uh, and my grandmother uh, kind of circled the wagons and, and uh, thought this little boy's going to need some help and no one's going to get near him. And I was, you know, I could do whatever I wanted. If I wanted to sew, my grandmother taught me to sew. That's <laughs> awesome. Funny. Yeah. But you so know what it meant? It did. It gives you a sense, but you also know, kind of like, let's don't show daddy this, you know, let's, 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 you know, let's don't show, uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, my dad was in the army. My dad was like a career army man. And, um, he, his, his uh, plane went down when I was 11, oh, which is wow. a terrible time to lose, uh, for a boy to lose his dad. But, you know, there was a lot of, uh, over the years, um, wondering, was I a disappointment some way? And I even mentioned it to my mom once as an adult, and she was flabbergasted. She was like, what would ever, your daddy adored you. And she, there, uh, there's a story she told me that I think is so sweet. She said that when I was about three, um, I wanted a bride doll for Christmas. <laughs> Where they got it, they don't know. <laughs> I've been to the yeah. And I wanted a bride doll, and my dad was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is 1958. <laughs> yeah. But, but he got me. My, my mother said Christmas Eve, he went out and he found the most beautiful bride doll. And mother said, I was so excited on Christmas morning when I saw it, I peed in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you need to share that lesson with your that I don't know if you've shared that with your followers yet, but you have, wait, so you have twin sisters. Uh, your sisters are twins. They're twins. And are they, old, are they older or younger than you? My sisters are 22 months younger than me. So and we so, sort of grew up almost like triplets, you know, the three of us. But they're really close. I think that's why I noticed when everybody started hunkering down like this, I thought, you know what, this is not hard for me. I've, I spend a lot of time. And maybe that's because when I was younger, it was always them playing and I just had my own little thing going, so. So you're, you're was, always independent, but your your sisters are now in Chattanooga as well as your mom? They live together. In a all house three of them. The greatest. That's, that that's so ever, great. The Have you, now, you, obviously you haven't been, you, I know generally before this, you were traveling back and forth to visit them, right? 
And I happened to be there right when kind of the hunker down period started. And I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll do, I'll stay here. But it's uh, three old ladies, <laughs> like seven cats, some feral, some in, some out, some here, some there. So I got me a place nearby. You know, you you just don't want to move back in at 65 yeah. with your mom and your sister. So I was, and it was wonderful for me because I could hunker down. And then when I really got crazy, I would go over to see my mom and sisters. And so. But you haven't, you obviously, you've been hunkered down in LA now all by yourself. Yeah, all by myself. Are you, and are you going crazy a little bit? Are you, you know, I mean, I feel so, like you're, you're using Instagram for company, right? I'm using Instagram for company, but there's even times when I just turn that off, you know, it's, yeah. it's you know, when you hit uh, that many followers, also every day I go to the mailbox and there's presents, you know, people can find out your address. It's kind of frightening. I've gotten, you wouldn't believe what all I've gotten. What have, tell us some of the things you've gotten. I got a prism, <laughs> this beautiful prism. A prism? I got, I've gotten a collection of Foxfire books, which I used to read when I was a kid. Oh, every day something, you know. But That's I, so I, cute. I looked, um, what I've really been involved in, I, I would look on the internet and there were people selling things with my, with my sayings, like masks and t-shirts. There were 25 t-shirts alone on, um, on, I, I got to grab something real fast. Okay. Because <laughs> I want to show you. Okay, show me. So what oh, wait. I did was, yeah, go ahead. Because so you have your own t-shirt now. Yes, but it's not, I mean, I won't make the money. It's, I've decided I'm going to give it to charity. And so look, can you me, see? I do. <laughs> I, I yeah. love it. I love it. it. So I've been very busy with my T-shirt line. So you're sell you're selling those. What charity are you going to give them to? I've got a whole list. Top of the list is um, my pet charity, which is a Glisten, G L E S E N, which is helps. It was an idea that um, teachers had in the early '90s. How best can we help these LGBTQ LMNOP all these kids? How best can we help them? You know, and, and they banded together, and it's a wonderful organization. So that's the one. They're going to oh, also come out with a line of T-shirts that I'm helping them launch that will have, you know, this stuff on it. So, you know, you got to give back. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, I think it's just amazing that you, as I said, 4.3 million people, they look forward to your post. There's something... Uh, just as I, I was saying, when we were waiting for you, Leslie, just comforting and funny and, um, everyone here sh loves hearing your stories about growing up. And they can't and about... be too off colors. I get fussed at, you, you know, really? my mother, I, if I get too off color, which is always fun to be a little naughty, you know, here and there. Woo, I get I it. I agree. I get it. Oh, what do I get it? You were right like that. Wait, my, my daughter mother. wants. My daughter has a question. What? <laughs> oh, are you dating anybody? My daughter wants to no, know. No, no, I keep that part just quiet. Yeah, but, so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big no, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't talk about that, you know. But They're you lining do. Up. But, <laughs> but, lining up but Leslie, you and Dylan McDermott have a little, little thing going. We have, you know, it's funny, we did. American Horror Story together, and we only had one scene, but I just sat there. Um, Leslie Grossman was in the scene, and there were just three of us, and we, she, and Leslie was sitting there, and I would just sit there trying to be cute and trying to get their attention. I don't know what. I was so taken with him, and so we kept up on internet and started this funny thing, and now um, Ryan Murphy made an announcement. He's going to write something. <laughs> I know that's so awesome. So you've got here. He's going to write something for the two of you because you you started a fan club, didn't you? Start a Dylan McDermott I fan started, club for I'm, middle aged gay men. Well, I'm the founder and the guiding light. It's the <laughs> Dylan McDermott fan club for middle aged gay men. And of course, I was the only a member for a while. We. <laughs> it's funny because people are coming out of the woodworks, and I'm thinking, well. Maybe you could join, maybe not. You know, it's like the mean girl in high school. 
<laughs> well, you so so you've got this. So you've got your t-shirts you're selling. By the way, if people want to buy the t-shirts and support you, how do they do that, Leslie? They go to the at. Uh, it's at the Leslie Jordan. At the Leslie Jordan. I had to. I, there's a, a clothing designer. I think she does ski wear out of Vermont or Maine or something. She has Leslie Jordan at Leslie Jordan. No hard feelings, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you? But what, Leslie, Z T H E. I want to know what you're doing. To it's do you can you believe it? I live in New York and it is snowing right now. No way. Isn't that crazy? It is it's so, snowing. I'm in Los Angeles and it's been a different kind of heat. It's it's been really muggy, awful muggy muggy. But I um I uh, you know, when I get crazy, I just go for a drive. What do you do? I mean, I just literally get in the car and go for a drive. I also have started at 65 years of age taking horseback riding lessons. <laughs> Really? I exercised racehorses when I was a, a, a teenager, young man. And yeah. so I can ride anything. But the only way you can actually ride is to take the lesson. So they leave me alone. But oh, so, are, and, so you've been doing that during quarantine a little? Yeah, well, they're not allowed to actually, you know, it's considered, it's not an, a non-essential business. You can't. So what I do is I go over there and just hang with the horses. You know, it's just an empty barn. I mean, they have to eat every day and they do exercise them. But for some reason, I draw so much comfort. I just go over there with peppermints and feed the horses. <laughs> and do you, um, do you, are, are you able to see some of your friends like take socially distant walks or have, you no, know, I haven't have done some a sweet lot of tea that. with them? I haven't done a lot of that. You know, I am, um, I'm pretty okay. I was, I was, on, I've only actually been back about a week. Yeah, so maybe maybe all that's coming. I hope we can do all that. Take, you know, I did. I did with one of my best friends. We got in the car, put our masks on, and drove to Malibu, and then looked at the ocean and thought, "Well, so here we are." And we drove home. <laughs> Very exciting. Well, you know, I told people that who follow me, Leslie, that we were going to be chatting. So I want to get to some of their questions real quick. Who? Who's the most interesting celebrity you've met? Somebody said, tell the Lady Gaga story, but I also think it might be Robert Downey Jr. under the circumstances, right? Well, Robert and I didn't really talk here. I've embellished that story too. Here is the actual real story. Okay. I, in 1997, had several driving under the influences where I'm, I'm really, really ashamed of because... You know, you cannot do that. But, oh, what a role I was on. I got two, three in a row. And I was sentenced to 120 days in the Los Angeles County Jail. <laughs> and they handcuffed me and I put me on this little bench and I just sat there. My feet didn't even reach the ground. And my feet, I was just kind of sitting there and the cops, um, I, I, everybody had said to me, the minute you get down there, ask for the homo tank because you're not going to make it on the main line. There's actually an area where they put people like you. <laughs> the homo tank. So it's in. So that's the way things are ending up. But anyway, to make a long story short, I was waiting on my, <laughs> to tell them that I needed to go to the homo tank. And I hollered, hey, to these policemen. And they turned around and burst out laughing. I don't know. It must have been just me sitting on that bench with my feet not even reaching the ground. But they were very swift. Of, they, one of them kept calling me Little Bo Peaks. <laughs> jail is like the playground. It really is. Really? It's like, oh, like, wow. Yeah, it's like the playground with the teasing and the bullying. Right, and, I was going to say. So, not, not the fun I wasn't part of the playground. It. You know, I was not having it. So I said, I need to go to the homo tank. Like, and he came over and said, you know, you, it's pretty rough in there. And I said, in the home hotel? He says, well, it's pretty rough anywhere, but we want to put you in this special place called the Softy Tank for the Softies. Aww, so, yeah. And it doesn't have to do with your sexuality. It's just people that are, you know, soft, that just don't. So anyway, I'm in the Softy Tank for 12 days of my unfortunate incarceration, and I decided I'd had enough. I really thought, I think I had a panic attack in retrospect, but I went up to the turnkey and I told him, I said, listen, I need to take a walk. If you don't mind, I promise I'll come back. And he goes, no, you can't take a walk. 
Well, he came over later on. He said, listen, we've got Robert Downey Jr. downstairs and we don't have anywhere to put him. And so he, they brought him up. Well, he wasn't real chatty. You know, there was all of us sitting there and I'm thinking, but then four years later, I'm on Ally McBeal and there he was. And did and you say, I me, know you? Well, he, he said to me in front of everybody, like Callista Flockhart and Jane Krakowski and Lucy, Lou, all the people show, he goes, do I know you? And I went like this. I said, zip it, zip it. He goes, what? I said, zip it. <laughs> so he came over later. He goes, Where do I know you from? I said, 152, pod A, cell 13. You're on the top bunk. He goes, oh my God, you wrote me that letter. And I had written him a letter. There was a kid that was being teased because he was HIV positive and all the other, because we were in that kind of softy area. That's, I guess, where they put people who were HIV positive. And so he, he, nobody would eat with him. And I sat down with him and he said, you don't have to do this. Well, that next day I got out. So I wrote a letter so involved <laughs> to Robert Downey Jr. asking him to please look after that kid. Oh, so that's so nice. He said to me, he, he said, I, you wrote me that letter. And I said, oh my God, because I was the only one privy to your current address. And I was worried about that boy. And he said, well, they moved him before I actually got in. They moved him the same day. But he said, I carried that letter my entire incarceration. And I want to thank you. So, well, and, and that's, and you have been sober for quite a while now, Leslie, because that was a, that was a tough period of your life, I know. But then you, you got sober how many years ago? 22. 22, 22 years ago. 22 years. Well, congratulations. Long for that. time between cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> you killed me. Um, somebody wanted. 22 years. I said, no. Uh -uh. Someone said, if you weren't a comedian and actor, what else would you be doing? Probably something with horses. Yeah. That was you know, just my you love. been a jockey, maybe. You're 411, right? Listen, I lived out at Belmont Park. On Long Island, I lived there in really? the park in at Elmont, Long Island, and I exercised racehorses from the time I was mid twenties. I did it, and then we would ship to Hialeah, which is no longer even there. I, re I remember Hialeah. Yeah, it was so beautiful. So I did that for years. I didn't act. I never, I never even thought about it. And when so all that was over, you, were you ever? Did you ever? So did you seriously consider becoming a jockey? Absolutely. I rode and every what happened? Day. I was too fat. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's about weight. It has nothing to do with height. You know, they're handicappers, and, and their ideal is to have all the horses cross the finish line nose to nose. So they will assign weight for sex and, I mean, what the sex of the horse and how, how many races they've won to handicap the race. And so if you're so fat, they can't, you know, I mean, I wasn't fat. They wanted like but 109, you, 109 pounds is a good weight for a jockey. And I was a solid, like one, two, I tried, oh gosh, I tried. I could, you know, so I was just a really good exercise rider. I'd go out in the mornings. And so how'd you get into acting? I got, I quit. I, I decided I was 27 years old. I was living so nomadic all over the place. I went back home and I enrolled at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And someone said to me, take that intro to theater. That'll get your art selective out of the way. And I was no spring chicken. So I walked into this intro to theater class. And like I said, I'd always been funny. It just hit me. I went to the head of the department. I said, D -d 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 what do I do? This is it. He said, well, first of all, I want you to learn to pronounce theater. Because I'd say theater. I want to be in the theater. He said, it's theater. I said, okay, okay. I want to pronounce it. Please just let me do it. <laughs> so that, and so he, he said, you can do this. And you started acting. And I started and I, I got a degree. And then in 1982, I got on a bus for bound for Hollywood. I thought if I'm going to starve, I'll starve with a tan. And I had, <laughs> I had $1,200, which was a fortune that my mother pinned into my underpants. And I got on a bus <laughs> with my degree in theater. <laughs> and I went to Hollywood and I, I never looked back. I didn't know a soul. 
That must have been so about. scary. Did it uh, take you a while to get some, you know, to, to make a living? I didn't make a living. It, it took me a while. So I was everything. I was the, I was the um, uh, host at the old hamburger hamlet, the ch big China hamburger restaurant. But I, my first job was if, maybe it was not 82, maybe it was 87. I can't remember. Clara Peller was an actress from Chicago and, Where's the beef? She started. Oh, I remember her from the you... from the Wendy's commercial. <laughs> well, Joe Settlemeyer, who directed that, never directed me, but he it, it was a whole a whole genre of commercials that came in, and I was perfect. I worked. I was the pip printing guy. I was the elevator operator to Hamburger Hale for Taco Bell, where you went. I would just have this dead pen look, and they would tell me, "Don't act." I said, "Okay." We, but, but, don't act, just say this. I said, okay. And I just, <laughs> people were just enthralled. <laughs> so I, right off the bat, I did commercials. And then yeah. obviously you got, got other parts and shows. I mean, much later, the Will and Grace opportunity came up, right? Right. And that changed everything. That changed the whole game. Because all of a sudden, I was more than the funny guy who comes in with a zinger, even though I came in with the zingers. But um, to, to you know, Max Muchnick, they say I just butcher their names. Max Muchnick and David Cohn. I don't know how I can butcher that. But they always say, you go on interviews and butcher our names. But anyway, they, would, they wrote, you know, well, well, well. You know, I thought I smelled gin and regret. And that's just like something out of Tennessee Williams. So it is. I couldn't get down the street. People would holler that at me and everything. So that really changed and opened up so many doors for you. It did. That I have to do that. And then I had done this movie 100 million years ago with Olivia Newton-John called Sorted Lives. Right. And I read I, about I, that. I play a man in the mental hospital who thinks he's Tammy Wynette. So I'm in drag. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, That's kind and, of a cult classic. And I think yes, it's probably, I bet that, a lot of people will be watching it given your newfound Instagram fame. I mean, I've had people yell lines from that movie, walking down the streets of London. I mean, you're like, what? What did you, what did you just say? They go, oh, loved it. Loved it. <laughs> So, so you've got a show coming up, Leslie, on Fox uh, with, um, I'm trying to remember, don't tell me, don't tell me, Mayim Bialik. Mayim, and we met. What's fun is that it's Mayim Bialik, Swoosie Kurtz. Oh, I love her. She's as, such an incredible actress. She's such a big Broadway actress. And they're, they're a mother-daughter duo, and Swoosie's fancy. It takes place in Louisville, Kentucky. And Swoosie goes to the races in hats. And then she's got this daughter that's 38 and not married, and she tells her, you've got to marry. And so Swoosie, to, to spite Swoosie, um, uh, Mayim buys a cat cafe, and I wrangle the kitties. <laughs> That's my job. So are you excited? I mean, you have you shot any of the we show have yet? A, the day we were supposed to start, we got the memo that said, listen, everybody's going to have to stay in. And we're so we the cool part is that we have not shot one frame. And the four of us, which is um, Swoosie, Mayim, Cheyenne Jackson, someone else from the stage and Kyla Pratt, a little Disney darling with a big singing voice. We have begun a love fest just four or five of us we just never you know we're back and forth and we've never even be started the show forget well, the show we're having so much fun i hope i hope you can i hope you can start shooting it soon and i think it's so awesome that ryan murphy who is gosh he must be one of the most successful producers around that he he Tell me about the show he wants to do with you and Dylan McDermott. Is that we true? Don't know. We don't. I mean, I'm, as I said to Dylan, I wrote Dylan. I said, "What well, do you?" Because I, you know, Ryan has written for me all the way back from third season. I started on um, American Horror Story, and let me tell you, he's got eighteen shows on TV. Eighteen, he's I think. And so he wouldn't say it if he didn't mean it. And of course, then I think, well, but I'm over at Fox, like under contract. They'll fight. You know what I mean? It could be anything. Yeah. It could be anything. So well, who knows? I mean, who knows? What a, 
it's wonderful when you're at this point in, in my life, especially, I've done everything I got off that bus to do. You know, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done Broadway. Actually, I did not do Broadway. I did off-Broadway and they pulled the plug the day we moved to Broadway. But that's a whole other long story. But, um, and so everything from here on out's gravy, you know. It's so, it's so, so exciting. I'm, I'm you know, so I'm just sitting here like, you. you know, buffing my fingernails. Well, Ryan, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I'm very busy. I'm very busy posting very busy, for Instagram. Ryan. So wait, so I wanted to ask you, so what have you been doing to pass the time? I know you've been watching yoga, yoga videos. I know you've been doing all kinds of things, but, um, you know, have you been watching anything good on television? Have you been, uh, right. have the you been only thing cooking? I watch on TV, I do quite a bit of cooking and you know what? Cooking for one can be fun. I never thought about it that way. If you plan it out, you go to the store, you know, Tonight, we're having a roasted beef. Um, I did cheat and uh, bought mashed potatoes from a little pouch, but I could make good mashed potatoes. But, you know, I do a lot of cooking, and I also watch. Um, I have this rigid, like I get up in the morning, I make myself take a shower and put my shoes on. And then I'm like, okay. And then I read the papers. That's one thing I do, go out and get all the papers. I read four papers a day. And then, you know, then it's then, and, and then I don't put my pajamas on until eight o'clock, which is so hard. <laughs> you know, about six o'clock, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> but I won't let myself. I'll sit there with my shoes on all by myself in my apartment and watch forensic files which is, uh, I love, I've loved it since I, I read Agatha Christie novels as a kid. I love murder. I don't know what, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't watch the murder, but it's the, why people do what they do. You know, I'm just fascinated and I'm way ahead of them. I've even done a lot of, of, of uh, Instagram posts about it because I know. Really? You, know, honey, you did it. We know you did it. You can sit wait, wait, there. Wait, it's called, well, I don't know this show, should I? Forensic Files started it. And that is where they show, and then it, it morphed into another show I watched called 48 Hours. Oh, or, of no, course. No, 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 40, that, not that 48 Hours. This is another one called 48 something, where they, if a murder is going to be solved, it will be solved within the first 48 hours. So they take each hour and tell you, they'll show the murder and everything. And then they show you all, everybody they're looking at. And I know every time they did it. And I'm what, what, are, are you watching, are you doing it? Are you watching any, are you streaming any shows or watching anything on Netflix or anything? I, you know, I don't, I don't watch scripted television and I don't watch movies. People said, Leslie, the last movie I saw was Brokeback Mountain. That was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> my friends, my friends tell me, Leslie, you miss so much. I said, I can't watch it, but for several reasons, I see the process of it because I've worked in the industry for so long. I see the shot. I see this. I see that. And I think, oh my gosh, they should have, you know, had blah, blah, blah. And I just don't. So you're too critical and you kind and of. too, just too um, busy. I'm too busy. I don't know what I'm doing. I can <laughs> well, think of it. So, um, have you ever considered doing a Will and Grace spinoff show? Somebody wanted me to ask you. Well, I they'd, all they'd have to do is ask. Of course, I'd jump on board. They're the best writers. They you know, are. They're so much fun. Absolutely, I'd do spinoff. But I, you know, I'm very busy right now. I'm over at Fox and Ryan Murphy's. <laughs> yeah, you're you're very busy. All right, what is your favorite kind of Southern food? My favorite food is probably, and I don't know how Southern is, it's just old fashioned beef stew. My mom, who I hit tomorrow's Mother's Day, or I don't know when this will air, but I hit the jackpot. I mean, I my mother's the baby of nine. Wow. Nine, or seven, seven. And she, because of that, there's something so, I don't know what it is about the baby of the family. My daddy was the baby of his family. Uh -huh. They're just, when the babies had a baby, it was like, and I, there's something about my mom that, but her, my favorite Southern food is anything she cooks, but she makes the best beef stew. That's not particularly Southern though, is it Leslie, no. right? No, but we, we also, I'll tell you what she does do that I love. When I was a kid, we'd go to the farmer's market and you cook pinto beans with a big ham 
like a ham hock or something in those beans. You crumble a, a homemade um, uh, cornbread, no yeah. sugar, no sugar, no sugar in the cornbread. And then you put the beans and a slice of onion, a slice of tomato, and um, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe? <laughs> cantaloupe. Come on, I mean, really? That's just in the southern in the summertime because you get all that from the farmers market. Oh. That's what, <laughs> you don't eat it with the beans. But yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You just put the cantaloupe on the side. Yeah, that's your dessert, I guess. <laughs> so, um, and so if you've been cook, you've been cooking. You're making a roast beef for one tonight, right? For one. And and I have. I think I saw you eating fried chicken too. I eat a lot of fried chicken, but I don't fry chicken myself. That's. Fried chicken is hard. It's all. Where about do you the get your fried chicken? I get my fried chicken from the farmers market right down here. There's a place called Fritzy's that is the best fried chicken I've ever had, and they're closer and all this. Well, uh, so Fritzy's oh. fried chicken, but but the best fried chicken is my mother's. Yeah. Ever. I and you know it's so funny because you'll ask her, well, what's the? She goes, I don't know. Little, you know, salt, pepper, flour. I, go, but I think you just secret. put it in a paper bag and shake it up and then shake you just it put it in super hot oil. I love fried chicken too. Someone said you've named your five favorite straight boys. <laughs> Who are your five favorite straight girls? Oh, Katie Couric. Oh, come on. Um, Lily Tomlin. Uh, Dolly Parton. Um, Jane Fonda. <laughs> And who's the third one of that? That's the three, Lily, the, for the nine to five girls. Yeah. And, and who else is my favorite? Um, I really glommed on to um, Stephanie, Lady Gaga. I really and truly, the story's a little off color, but she's a little off color. But you know what? I can tell within 10 minutes of meeting you how you were raised. Just please, thank you. She's beautifully brought up. She's a she's a nice girl. She she's is, crazy. So tell, tell us if... <laughs> Tell us the Lady Gaga story. It's off color, though. Well, can, can you I... clean it up a little bit? Okay. <laughs> we had a scene where she was supposed to jump out from behind a tree with fairy dust and blow it in my face. And now wait, this, what was this in? It was called American Horror Story. Oh, yes, And of it course. was the um, a Ro My Roanoke Nightmare. And because I'm the funny guy that comes in with a zinger, this is the way I read a script. Bullshit, bullshit. Oh, my line. <laughs> my line. So I never know what's going on. But this one I could not figure out. I kept saying, why is she dressed like a pilgrim? They said, just don't worry. I said, but I'm in modern day. Why is she dressed like a pilgrim? So they brought her from behind the tree. And um, she said to me, may I talk to you a minute? And we had worked together a few days, but... Um, she took me on the woods and she said, I, when I act, I always end up sexualizing my characters and I don't want to do that for this. And I thought, where's this going? <laughs> nothing, nothing came of it. Nothing. We did the scene. She blows fairy dust. I find, I'm supposed to fall onto a, um, a, a furniture pad. She then was supposed to take a stick and, and, and make me crawl on my hands and knees. And then I was, she was supposed to kick me and they had me in a, a little, uh, you know, a thing for a pad. And then uh -huh. she was supposed to squat on me and, and cut my throat. But there was nothing, nothing was supposed to untowards, but she kind of made it into something it wasn't. And I'm just, I don't know. I was just lying there when she's supposed to cut my throat with her undulating and carrying on and I'm thinking, how do I get myself in these situations? I mean, what am I doing? What am I doing? It's too hard to explain. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I have to be honest, Leslie, I'm a little lost with the whole story, but I think I need to watch American Horror Story to kind of catch the whole thing. But here's the crazy part. That became literally a two-second flash. I've had people say, you made that up. I said, I did not make that up. I did not make that up. Because it was right after, what's his name? Cuba Gooding Jr. was against the tree with her, which is another whole story. Wow. <laughs> with, her like you guys... over, with her pilgrim dress over her head. She gets around that one. 
<laughs> she's so she is she's so talented though, isn't she? She really is. She really and truly is. You know. So listen, um, before we go, um, I was going to tell you. You know, I grew. I went to the University of Virginia with a lot of people from Chattanooga, from Lookout Mountain. Oh, do you, I know. Do you Lookout know Mountain people? is world famous, and I'll tell you why Lookout Mountain is so famous. The man who invented Coca-Cola could not find anyone to bottle it. Atlanta claims Coca-Cola. Right. But it really and truly had cocaine in it. I mean, in the beginning, Coca-Cola. And he couldn't get it. This is a million years ago. There are four families on Lookout Mountain that own the rights to bottle Coca-Cola worldwide. Really? And they're very philanthropic. So that's what makes my hometown so beautiful. We have a, you know, we have an $8 million aquarium. We have, we have these, and you just think, where did all this money come from? Coca-Cola, that's where it came from. Have you heard of the Macaulay School? Yes, of course. So I went to college with all the Macaulay boys. Oh, with... they Macaulay and Baylor were the two schools there. Yes, which and, I went to uh, school with Jack Macaulay and Alan Macaulay. Oh my gosh! Well, there Isn't you go. Isn't that funny? I'm sure there's some Coca Cola in that background. Maybe <laughs> they're, they're, they were really, really nice guys. Wait, somebody said. Wait, who who is the most interested in the well, I'm gonna let you go in a minute, although you know, I don't want you to put your pajamas on for quite a few hours, Leslie. Um uh, so who's the most interesting celebrity? Oh, did I ask you that? The interesting celebrity question? I asked you that. That i that yes, pro yeah, probably that I've worked with over the years would be Lily Tomlin was the most interesting. I okay. just I mean, she's just you can't even explain Lily. She's just Lily. <laughs> I, and and uh, someone wanted to know what brings you joy these days. I think probably um, what brings me the most joy is getting responses to these in Instagram things where people will really, in that brief forum, that way in which they can respond, will say, I'm having a rough go. I'm having yeah. a rough go. You know, I'm stuck here with my three kids and I love them. But my, you know, my husband is out of la 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 and thank you. And I think, wow, you know, that's, 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 you know, that's to, to, and that's my job. I figured out that's my job. Not to go on there and say, wear your mask and don't do this and don't do it. That's not my job. My job is just to say, you know, well, what y'all do? <laughs> and just tell them. And yeah, and do you do you do you respond to the comments and talk to folks? I try. It's gotten where I'm getting a, an average of six thousand. You know, I used to read every single one, and I don't know how they stack them up. Like I don't know what comes back because I've had really you know famous people uh, or someone will call me and say, "You'll never believe," you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. La, 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 and I go, I oh yeah, I, I see that. I see Michelle liking your posts. It's fun to what? see. We the people husband, commenting and liking. Long before Ryan Murphy, her husband wrote for me. Oh. Uh, um, uh, David Kelly. And right. I'm talking everything from uh, L.A. Law to the practice to um, uh, all of those. He wrote, he would, uh, he was the first one that would write for me. He's so was, talented. You know, I've been, I've been working on a book and I was going through some, you know, old letters. And do you remember Richard Gebhardt? He was would, on L.A. Law. He played um, the older lawyer. Do you remember him? I think it was Richard Gephardt. It might. I might be. Ha did, I he, might have, did he die? He did. He passed like, away. Like a few days ago, right? No, 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 no. no. A while oh. ago. Um, oh. But he was on L.A. Law, and that that used to be one of my favorite shows. I forgot you were on L.A. Law. No, I wasn't on L.A. Law. Oh I no, was, I know what know, you're talking about. The, the practice was show. the spinoff, and then. Right when I can't remember if I did the practice or not, but I did Boston legal legal. Yes, that was the first time he wrote me five episodes and it was uh, Betty White and myself. We had an affair. <laughs> I know. And, and she I, I heard that story and you had to go into the freezer. Yes. <laughs> and to pass the time they had fake uh, fake frozen food and it said freezer queen and they covered me in, in ice crystals and I was so miserable but I just held that right below my neck freezer queen everybody's 
everyone's saying Richard Gebhardt. I know Richard Gebhardt's a senator, y'all, but there, there is also uh, from L.A. Law. I'm going to look him up because that's going to bug me. Um, here it is. It's Richard Dysart. Sorry. Richard <laughs> Dysart. Uh, he was he played Leland McKenzie in L.A. Law, and he actually had me and my friend over for dinner when we were in Los oh. Angeles after we graduated from college. We took a trip to California and he w he was so nice. But yes, he passed away a while ago. He was 86 years old. So um, anyway, that's what I was thinking about. Just if anybody, if anybody was wondering. Fascinating, huh? <laughs> so. Well, I'm so happy to, to meet you and, and we're going to, we're going to put the highlights of this conversation. And I do this newsletter every morning called Wake Up Call. Leslie, oh, so you have, to, you have to subscribe to it because we'll put some of the, the highlights from our conversation. And leave out the naughty bits so mother will be so proud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell, you tell your mother and your sisters, I said, hey, what are their names? My mother is Peggy Ann. She named her twin daughters Jana. Lynn and Janet Ann. So there was a Janet. That's Ann. very confusing. Well, Jana Lynn became Cricket really early on. And so there's Cricket and then Janet Ann. But they're just, uh, they're just Mama and the twins. You know what I mean? They're just a unit. Just Mama and the twins. Mama and them. <laughs> well, you know, by the way, you know, I, I think it's so, you know, we're about the same age and it, it, I think it's so wonderful that your parents were so supportive of you because as we know, that wasn't necessarily the case um, when we were growing up. And when you look at all the changes that have come about for the LGBTQ community, um, uh, it, must, it must be absolutely mind blowing for you considering what it was like for so many kids like you when, when you know, our contemporaries. Exactly. I told my mother I thought something was up. I didn't even know what it was when I was about 12. And, you know, she didn't pull her Bible out, which I thought might happen. She sat very still. Her only form of reference would have been um, either Liberace or uh, what's his name from the center square, Paul Lynn. I mean, that was it. That really was her. And I remember her saying, you know, I've, my fear is that you'll be subject to ridicule and I couldn't bear that. So maybe live quietly. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, obviously, uh, I mean, she was, she was worried about you. She was. And that was, you know, having had lost my dad that year and everything, but she has been so supportive of me and everything, you know, she'll, she'll get quiet. You know, my mother's a lady. You know what I mean? My sisters are too. They're just ladies. They're I feel like, ladies. I feel like, would you ever write a book about your life? I think that with so many people who are now so, um, you know, enjoying you, Leslie, I think it would be great for you to write a book about what it was like growing up. I had a, a call yesterday, so it's in the works. Uh, for really? One big, yeah. One of the big publishing houses. I can't say anything, but they said, look, just write. Just write. And I said, about what? They go, just write, you know, just write. And I said, okay, okay. That's awesome. Well, I'm so, honestly, I'm so happy for, uh, that everyone's <laughs> discovered you and that all these wonderful <laughs> things are happening for you, both in your career and now possibly writing a book, selling t-shirts for charity, <laughs> um, you know, having Ryan Murphy write a show for you. So it's yes, just... Yes. It's so wonderful, and I'm so happy to meet you and uh, to get a chance to talk to you. Well, thank you, and I hope we meet in person when I hope when so all too. of this calms down. When do you when do you think things were going to be kind of back to normal? Do you have any idea? I my theory on the whole thing has been when it very first started. I've, I and I'll wrap it up with this. I get so long winded, but when That's it okay. first started, I thought to myself, I thought I've been through this before. You know, as a gay man in the 1980s, I buried an entire phone directory. And this this is, you know, out of that 
came AIDS Project Los Angeles, came, you know, Project Angel Food. We looked at one another and without saying it, I remember all of us thinking, we got to take care of our own. We're not going to get a lot of help here. And so now that this is, and we came through it, you know, kinder, we came through it more willing to help one another. And there was a strength in community. And I thought when this started, I thought, you know what, this doesn't have anything to do with whether you're gay, straight, black, white, Latin, you know, whatever, but we're going to get through this as a community and we're going to come through it kinder and more willing to help one another. And I think that's going to be the silver lining. Is do you think, I mean, <clears throat> I hope so, but then I sometimes worry that it's just, um, exaggerating the, the political divisions in this country. I know. And, and I think though, that once we get through all this, maybe it won't be quite because it won't be quite as divisive as it was because we did get through this and this is not something political really they politicized it you know of course but um i don't you know i don't i, I don't watch a lot of news and tv and stuff i don't i just i can't you know i turn it on i think oh yeah 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 let's go let's go make beef stew <laughs> it can it can be sort let's of take a back uh, scratcher and turn it into a baton let's yeah <laughs> by the way i need that i need that back scratcher that you were using as a, a baton i need to get one of those <laughs> i use it now to exercise that's the one thing i'm not doing is i've got to somehow i used to treadmill and swim the pool's closed it's a uh, i don't feel good you know what i mean i just feel i don't feel bad but i don't feel healthy and with it well you need to keep <laughs> exercising and that doesn't mean lying in bed watching yoga videos leslie <laughs> that means actually getting out of bed it, uh, it, it, and you need to stretch because you know we all we all start shrinking when we get older so we need to keep stretching <laughs> thank you anyway well listen <laughs> lots of love to you and um, and maybe maybe we'll meet again in person one day. I hope so. Where's anyway. your daughter? Is she still sitting there? No, I don't know where she went. Carrie, <laughs> she's been cooking up a storm. Good for her. Yeah, but I've her. been eating up a storm, and I need to stop. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but she loves you too. So thank you for thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. And, and, and DM me and tell me how you're getting along. Okay, I sure will. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Leslie. Bye. 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 bye.